Hi everybody, for those of you new to the channel, I'm Teresa Perrin and I'm going to discuss Fiora with you tonight. First of all, congrats to anybody who got in this play um, when I tweeted it out this morning. Guys, I didn't like the way it was moving, but it did get a pullback, which created an excellent opportunity for people to get in and then it proceeded to run and run and run. But I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer, however some of you may feel that this is but you need to be educated. And when something runs the way that it ran today, you need to ask yourself why. Well, I of course did that and I'm going to share what I found with you. And if you are in Bior, it is very important you pay attention to this video and please hit that like button and share it out there so that people are aware of what they just need to watch out for. If you know what's happening, then you're educated and you understand the play and you know what's coming before you get to be a bag holder, which I do not want to see any bag holders in 2023. So let's get started. And please remember that nothing I say is financial advice. Always do your own deed. All right. So be or in the after, uh, well, let's start with the day. The day it was up 152.65% or $3.22. In the after hours, just like I expected, this move continued and we were up another 44.63% or $2.38. We currently sit at $7.71. I do think that it's going to come down just a little bit more because it did dip below that 13 SMA. So now I think it's going to come back and either hit that 20 or the 48 before um, it tries to make a move back to the upside. Now, why is it running this way? Well, guys, in this video, I am going to tell you exactly why it's running this way. Yes, there is a high short interest, so I am sure that's part of it. Um, there also is probably a lot of FOMO buying going on in this play right now, but also there are warrants that I am sure they are trying to take advantage of at this point. And I'm only looking at the most recent ones. There may be others, guys, but that would take deep diving. And I do not have a history of this stock. I have only traded it on runs in the past, um, previously through the options chain. I thought I looked this morning and didn't see them, but um, I know it had a recent stock split. So perhaps um, when I looked later in the day, it was there. Perhaps I just missed it or was doing something. I, I don't know what I did, um, but I didn't notice them this morning or perhaps because the price was so cheap, I was looking to buy commons. It didn't even look, but I did look at them later in the day and saw that they do have options in this play. So keep that in mind as well, because that's important to know. But as far as the worms go, um, I think that is what is happening right now, creating this run and why it's driving up um, as quickly as it is. My concern, guys, and what was the red flag to me is that when a stock moves up, generally it has pullbacks along the way where it consolidates, which if you look at the middle of this chart, you can see a nice one that happened right around that $5 range towards the end of the day. Um, and if you were... And, Slightly, it started to happen around that, uh, I think it was probably around $4 or something here, right below it. Um, I had said, I right on Twitter, I tweeted out, I'd really like to see the stock get a pullback and some consolidation. Guys, it needs to. These move straight to the upside. This is not healthy stock movement. And, you know, this is a, a really crappy chart, but it really is the best one um, that I like to use for pictures as far as when I um, make a video. Um, but I'm not going to do deep dive into the TA today um, as far as where I think this is going to go, because this is not a play that that matters clearly. Um, but there is reason behind this, guys, and it's very important that you understand it. So please pay attention to what I'm about to tell you because I just spent the last hour um, researching things after taking my kid to the airport. Well, I started actually in the car because my ex-husband was driving. But at any rate, let's um, get going with what I found. So first of all, oh, hold on. Okay, so yesterday Bior announced that they um, received information from feedback from the FDA regarding their pre-IND feedback form, and they provided an update on key programs for 2023, which I highlighted here because I want to draw something to your attention that I saw here. Um, it says that they presented the first detailed results from the targeted therapeutics program device performance study, indicating successful device function when administered with food, 
which could potentially enable non-fasted administration in patients at the Crohn's and Colitis Congress on January 19, 2023. Guys, mark that on your calendars because January 19, 2023, I would expect to see some movement again in Bior. Now, um, there's other things too that they're doing. They're filing an IND for targeted therapeutic PGN 600 and enter the clinic in the first half of 2023. And there's a reason I'm reading all this stuff to you, not to um, bore you, but keep in mind the first half of 2023, they're filing that IND for their program and they want to enter in the clinic to start the clinical study, okay? Now, generated key target therapeutic PGN 600 data by Q3, complete systemic therapeutic preclinical data generation with a next generation device in quarter one and quarter two. Guys, there is one more page, but it doesn't really have anything major on it. Um, it just says that initiate the next phase pharma partnership for systemic therapeutic programs in 2023. Now, down the bottom, it says Bureau remains committed to efficient use of resources by maintaining its target monthly cash burn rate while rapidly uh, progressing development. Keep that in mind because that is important. They are going to need money, and I know this because I just went and reviewed the balance sheet. And guys, I had tweeted out earlier, if you follow me on Twitter, um, when I was in the car taking my daughter to the airport, if anyone knew when the last offering was. And the reason that I asked that was not because I don't know how to find it myself. Thank you. Obviously, if you follow me, you know that I do. But somebody wrote that back to me. Um, but it was because I was in the car and I was quickly trying to get information because I wanted to know prior to market close um, or, mar you know, so that I could get this out to you guys, what the situation was because um, a red flag and offering was just going off in my head. And indeed, guys, they did do an offering back in, let's see, I found it here. Um, November 6, 2022, they did an offering. This is the 8K for it just so you know, um, and that's page two. I'm going to get into in one second. It only raised like nine or 10 million off the top of my head. Uh, I thought I highlighted it, but I didn't. They sold 32,506,250 shares of the common stock and an additional 32,506,250 warrants, okay, at 30 cents combined. Now, Keep in mind that that was pre-split and the warrants were issued at 0 0.3288 per share or essentially 33 cents per share. And you can see that here, okay? So there were um, 36, hold on, um, warrants, 33 cents. 11-9-2022, and you can see the amount here for this one was 12505 but as you can see in that previously disclosed, this is only one that um, filed. There was actually $33 um, million. and now that direct financing raised $9.75 in total with $6 million in gross proceeds from an existing investor and $3.75 reinvested by Ethereum for the interest on convertible notes held by the firm. Okay, so basically um, that was interest that they gave them shares of stock in exchange for and warrants. Guys, this is not good to be perfectly honest with you. Um, this sounds to me like they have some very bad investing going on. So you need to be aware of that. And unfortunately, a lot of startup bio companies do have this. So it's not like a deal killer, but it's just something you need to have in the back of your mind. Now, I calculated out in order to um, exchange those warrants at the 25, you have to multiply it by 25 because they did a one for 25 reverse split, right? So at 33 cents, um, times 25, I get $8.25. So that being said, that would be the current price of what they'd be equivalent for. So if they hadn't exchanged those warrants previously, again, I didn't go into full detail of the exposure due to time. And because personally, I don't have enough in this, I just needed to know the information to know what to do and to let you know what is going on. So 
That being said, $8.25. Well, guess what? In after hours, we hit that. And that's when you started seeing things to start to come down. So I'm guessing they were immediately exercisable if they so chose to do so. Um, again, that fact, you will have to double check if you are curious, but I just want to get the facts out there. And that 33 million um, of those obviously would be um, likely divided by that 25 for the reverse split as well. So, um, you know, a little over mm, 1.5 million roughly off the top of my head. Okay. So keep that in mind. That's what puts that available. But guys, if you look at this balance sheet, there's other concerns. I just want to see if I skipped anything. Oh yeah. So, um, with the reverse stock split vote for that one for 25 that they recently voted on December 19th, they also voted to reduce the number of authorized shares of common stock from 350 million shares to 164 million shares. Now, why is that important, guys? Because right now, I'm going to show you, but actually, did I take, I did. All right. Right now, Bior's free float that they have is 8.32 million shares with 8.93 million total shares outstanding, okay? So keep that in mind. Let's just, for the sake of being nice and easy and a round number, we'll give them a little benefit of the doubt and say they have 9 million shares, okay? Now, right now, they are authorized 164 million shares. Do you get what I'm getting at here? They're going to do an offering. Uh, in my honest opinion, I mean, obviously, I'm not them. I can't 100% guarantee it, but they would be darn foolish not to do an offering at this point. Okay, going back to this picture, I want to show you. Um, hold on, I have something on my screen. Um, apologize. So, going back to this picture, they traded. 52.9 million shares today. Keep in mind, that is essentially like almost seven, six and a half times their entire float today, okay? With a turnover rate that was insane. So people were actively trading this, yes. But I'm sure there are people that were diamond handing, buying and holding, thinking, yay, they're going to get their money back. Because a lot of people have lost a lot of money in this stock from my understanding and what I've seen uh, floating around social media. So guys, I don't want that to happen to any of you. If you are like me, new to the stock, other than the fact that I traded a couple runs, but just solely traded, I have never like owned shares in the stock. Um, it's concerning because I think that you're going to get a rug pull coming and I just don't want you to be caught with your pants down. Now, that doesn't mean that this stock can't go higher and this doesn't mean that it can't run more. That is not what I'm saying. This is actually a very bullish looking chart right now with a lot of retail sentiment coming into it. So there's a possibility it could go much higher. I believe it is very heavily shorted. But again, we'll take a look at that. This 201.49% short interest showing on Fintel, guys, I do not believe is accurate at all. With 32.84 days to cover, um, those of you that are familiar with this stock, actually, maybe this is probably the reality of it with the naked shorting. I mean, I, I could see that. Yeah, maybe. But from the reality of the situation and what we have at hand, guys, most likely the short interest is more like... Um, little under 10% or 8% of this stock because 201.49 divided by 25, I don't think they've accounted for um, the reverse stock split yet, which is why I think we're seeing a short interest of 201% because I've seen this happen many times. So it's more likely that the short interest is more like 8%, 9%. Okay. So um, but this looks great when you're looking at it, doesn't it? It's very intriguing and enticing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's suggested or maybe that's more the reality of it. But remember, that's only the reported short interest as well. I'm sure the short interest in this stock is high, which is adding to this FOMO buying and the running of it. And also, guys, there are no shares currently available. So keep that in mind. That is also adding to the pressure. There are a lot of bullish things. But look at here. Do you think that if the short interest was 200%, the cost to borrow would be 7.81%? No, it would likely be through the roof, okay? So bear that in mind, please. 
The short volume ratio, guys, has been between 24.3 and 66.03% over the past two weeks. And today, it was shorted only 37%. I can't believe anyone was shorting it at all. But likely, guys, the beginning of the day when it was running up, and I was like, oh, I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole, and then it came back down, um, you know, that's that and consolidated before it made that next like higher, right? Um, so that that's what you like to see is that kind of price movement. But then if someone was still shorting it way up here, trying to bring it down at end of day, they might have been. Guys, I mean, there is a lot of bullish sentiment, like I'm saying. Someone clearly was because there is a short volume ratio going on here, right? So Again, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I'm trying to educate you because I think that tomorrow, most likely, or one day this week, an offering is going to come out. Now, my guess is that it's going to be tomorrow. And again, that's the warrants are also going to come in play, but that only is going to dilute it with that if you divide that by about 1.5 million shares, okay? So that's not the biggest issue right now because that still takes us only to around under 10 million shares, right? What is going to be the issue is that, and I tried to highlight it back here. Oh, I pulled up a chart. Here it is. The proposed reverse stock split. Okay. So this is what they voted on in, and I believe it was passed as far as in the, um, the shareholders meeting, and that was to reduce the amount of authorized shares, which is part of how they got you probably to approve the reverse split from that 336 million that you see at the bottom of the chart to that 150 million. Now of that, it looks like um, the number of shares of common stock that are reserved for future issuance, they have 5 million right now. So I believe that that's what's registered. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a registration statement for those 5 million shares. But they also have these available, okay? So keep that in mind that there's up to 150 million more shares. Now, looking at the balance sheet from this company, they clearly, clearly need money. Look at the cash and the cash equivalent at the end of the period. They are... This is from one year prior, 2021. You see, this is in thousands, but we'll just make it simple. 54,126 and 2023, 37,060. So they're burning through cash and they're going to need cash, guys, in order for them to be able to go and do these clinical studies. They cost money. This is an expensive time for a drug company that's trying to get their drugs to market. So you know, it costs money to make money. And that's not a bad thing. But the reality is, is how is the company using that money? If they're using it well, and it looks like they may have had issues in the past by their statement that I read earlier. Again, I don't know the full details. I just know what I quickly read um, in a one hour time frame, guys. And, you know, that's the time that I had tonight to devote to this to help you along and to help us all along. Um, and what I see here is a company that needs cash. They're burning through it, um, which again, not completely abnormal. They're, they're a drug, they're in a drug development phase. When these companies make their money is if they have successful products that, you know, go on the market and then they become, you know, profitable or they get bought. Okay. But right now they're in that developmental stage and they need money. So think about it. If it were your company, it would be stupid, 100% stupid of them when their stock is running the way we see it running today for them not to do an offering. So my point being, guys, is expect to see an offering coming. I 100% think that it is. And I think that, um, you know, we're going to get this pullback. Does it run again tomorrow? I think initially off the bat, I think if they weren't able to sell those million um, warrants into the picture in the after hours, then most likely, yes. And I don't know, there could be other warrants on the table too at other prices. That would be something if anyone has time, they may want to look into. But I see what I need to know. And that's that it, I know that if I cannot watch this move 100% of the time, I cannot um, risk taking that play and that I need to take my profits. Okay, this is a trade that right now, I think the best way to do it is to ride the runs, you know, sell the dips, buy back in. You can always buy it again. 
Remember, even if you have a small account, you have three day trades a week. So just don't get caught being stuck and being in the stock when they when they drop an offering. Even if it's a private placement offering, retail in general is not educated enough to understand, you know, that private placements are generally you know, yes, it decreases the float, but it's not like doing an offering to the public where those shares are likely going to get traded very, very quickly. But they respond to either one usually the same way. And again, an offering is not always a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, it's good because they gives them capital to keep going, right? And if they didn't get that capital, then it would be a problem. But guys, the bottom line is it's dilution and retail sees it as such and it causes a drop in the stock price because it, it decreases the value and the worth of the stock because there's more of them available. So, you know, A plus B equals C, right? So you just have to know and understand it. And it's as simple as I'm putting it out there. Hopefully I did a good job of explaining this. Bottom line is I expect to see an offering most likely drop tomorrow. I expect to see a dip in the stock price. If you did not get into BOR, I would highly recommend not chasing. When a stock is up at this level, you need to wait for that pullback and then get in. Just like with Jasper, and I'm sorry, I... I guess I did not make it clear in that video that yes, it's going, I don't, I, when I said, I think this is the beginning, I didn't mean tomorrow it's going to rock it right off after being up 500%, but perhaps I have some people that are new to the market and I need to be more careful and, and explain things better. And I apologize for that. And I want to make it very clear that yes, when a stock moves like that, and like we were today, it needs to get a pullback. That is 100% healthy before it makes its ne next leg up. And I believe Bior is going to continue to make some moves up higher as well, because I think now we're getting some momentum into it. But again, does that offering kill the momentum? Yes, I think it's going to kill it temporarily. But again, it, maybe it doesn't. Maybe people are so excited they don't even pay attention to that. Or maybe the shorts are so much worse than we know, and it just gets absorbed quickly. It's hard to say, but most likely we're going to see a pullback. That would be the time when you would consider re-entering. But remember, you want to wait till it gets to the bottom, and it's better to get it a little bit on the ways up than to get stuck catching a falling knife. Keep that in mind as well. Hope you found this video helpful, and comment below if you think I missed something or could have explained it better, because I just want no bag holders in 2023. I want us to make money and, you know, stop letting them take advantage of people not understanding or not thinking outside the box to what the next step is because they are always one step ahead of us guys and we need to be one step ahead of them and the way to do that I think is through education.